Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Business Essentials Podcast. I'm your host, Veronica, and today we're here to speak with Christelle Biga. Christelle is a speaker and a coach, and he, she's here to talk to us about courage. We all know that following our dreams can be a little scary, if not a lot scary. She's here to talk to us about courage, taking action, and following our dreams. I'm excited to speak with her, so stick around, and I'll be back right after this. Tony Robbins once said, no matter how many mistakes you make or how slow you progress, you are still way ahead of everyone who isn't trying. This is the Biz Essentials. You want to grow, get ahead, keep the spark. Here you'll get valuable insights and empowerment to grow personally and professionally. Isn't it about time you turn your dreams into successful passion projects? Learn how to be productive, be successful, be joyful, and more importantly, be yourself. The B Essentials. This is the Biz Essentials. And this is your host, Veronica of Veronica Ventures. Welcome back, everyone. I'm here with Christelle. Christelle, why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself and what it is that you do? Sure. My name is Christelle Biga. And as you can hear from my accent, I'm not originally from the US. I'm originally from Cameroon, that's in Africa. And I moved here to Los Angeles five years ago. And my story is quite interesting because the moment I arrived here at LAX, an immigration officer tried to deport me because he said I was coming to work as a prostitute. Could barely speak English. I had no family or friends here. So it was really anything but something that I had expected. And you know, the audience might know what it is to pl have plans, and they have expectations and have, you know, hopes and dreams and life happens. Something shows up and boom, fast forward. Um, I ended up in a detention center where I spent nine months to have to prove that I'm not a prostitute. I'm, I'm a good person, you know, mm -hmm. but it was really a challenging experience. And maybe uh, we are going to touch back on that during the interview, but that really was a defining moment for me because Trust me, I would have never thought that I can spend nine months in jail. We call it detention center, but that's what it is, it's jail. And nobody in million world will have convinced me before that, that I'm able to do it. And it's important because sometimes we look at ourselves and we don't see what we are really capable of. We don't give ourselves enough credit. We don't know how powerful we truly are until we find ourselves in those positions where we have to let that power out, where we have to become the person we never knew we were before. So maybe somebody might be listening and be like, well, I'm not that strong. I, I, never, I have never been in jail, but trust me, you have been in situations that when you look back, you wonder how you were able to make it through. And that's an ability that we all have, but sometimes again, we don't give ourselves enough credit. We don't know our own power. And so fast forward to answer your question, what do I do now? Now I really you know, just empower women entrepreneurs to have the courage to make those decisions that will lead them to success in life because in order for me to be where i'm sitting here today is having this conversation with you i have to make courageous decisions during all those nine months in detention i had the opportunity every day to sign one single paper to give up and go back to my country deportation paper you know sometimes when you are in this journey of life of you know building a business and trying to you know have more in life you have the opportunity at any given moment to give up, to go back to a comfort zone, maybe to a job, to whatever, to sit where you are because it's easier. I had that opportunity to go back to my country, to my family, to where people didn't treat me like a criminal. So I had to make the courageous decision every day to keep going with the cries, all of that. So that's why I really love to work with people on that and help them during those times where they don't see their own potential. They don't believe they can achieve what they want. They don't believe they can achieve their goals. I am the reminder that you are more capable that you believe you are. You are stronger than you are. And I give them the courage to make the decision to keep going and not give up until they achieve success. So I hope that wasn't too long. No, that was perfect. Wow. There's so much to unpack there, but wow, you have quite a story. And I love the way you talk about courage and how it plays a role in everyday life. Because even if you haven't been in a detention center, which I do want to touch back on because wow, but there it, it does take courage every day to 
get out of your comfort zone, whatever that may be. And for some of us, that'll be different than others. But some, for some of us, it's like huge, right? The, those barriers to what we have to overcome just to follow our dreams. And so I wanted to touch back on when you came here, you came here without knowing anybody or having money or anything like that. You just said, I'm going and and came. <laughs> that must have yes. been so scary. I know, right? So that's why I think I'm really the person to talk about courage, right? Who does that? But you- I do. I do those kind of things because I wanted more, right? And all of us can relate to that conversation of I want more in life. And when you are in that space where you know you want more, you also know that the more you are looking for is calling you to make different type of decision, different type of moves to be where you want to be. Because if you're feeling, oh, I, I want a better life, a better relationship, more money, more clients, you have to become someone else that you are not today. Because if you were already that person, you will have all the things that you want, you will have that result. So there is a set of decisions that you have to make. Sometimes they are scary. I agree. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Sometimes it's scary to have to do something. For example, if this is a business, you know, podcast, let's talk about this, right? Maybe, you know, people need to know about your business. They need to know you exist. So where are your people? Maybe on social media. Guess what? Now you have to probably go live on Facebook to tell them, hey, here I am. This is what I do. Is it easy? Heck no, it's scary, right? So that was me in, in Cameroon dreaming for more, wanting more, not because my life was bad. No, I was I actually had a pretty good life. I had a business and, you know, things were not bad, but I wanted more. And I knew the more that I wanted wasn't available where I was. There was less opportunities there than available here. And again, America is the land of opportunities. You know, the country where everything is possible, where all dreams come true. So I'm there thinking, okay, this is the place to be if my crazy dreams of impacting the world with my message have to happen. It has to be in the U.S. It can be anywhere else, right? So I said, okay, let's do it. Let's go to the U.S., apply for the visa, got the visa. And fa- funny story, again, my you know, way of making decisions by just following my God and as scary as it can be, I go on Google because I got my visa in December. And one thing I knew, I've never been to the US, but one thing I knew is that it's winter time. So, and I have no experience with winter and I don't want to deal with that. I'm not really good with cold. So I go on Google and I search states in the United States that don't have snow during winter. <laughs> yep. And California is one of them. So I'm like, oh, California, Hollywood is over there let's go right (laughs) i laugh but each time i share that people are like are you crazy nobody moves to la just by themselves and i say yeah and i didn't even speak the language so yeah okay so (laughs) so those are just the type of moves that sometimes our next level is calling us to make as a person we have to be in that space of this is where i want to be i know and it, it really comes down to being clear on the type of result that you want your vision determines the type of decisions you have to make along the way okay so if your vision is to do the same old thing you don't need to do anything different you already have been doing it that's why it's so critical to have a clear vision what it is that you want be clear on that and make sure it's not something that you want because everyone else around you wants let's talk about the coaching industry for example we know the 10K mark is a big deal. Everybody wants 10K month. Everybody wants to help you to achieve 10K month. It's a great one. So now you see that everyone on social media, oh, I want 10K month too. Is it really what you want? Or is it something that you want because everyone else wants it? Mm-hmm. That's what is really critical in that process of creating your vision, making sure it's something that you really want, not what everyone else wants. And you think it's that's what you should want but when you get clear on that and you know this is exactly what i want now it's time to make the moves now you know where you are it's not where you are going to make it happen and it's time to assess in that case what is my next move 
You don't need to know all the steps because that's something else that prevent people from, from doing the things. In my case, I could have sat there and be like, oh, let me find someone first that will, you know, accommodate me when I get to the US. Let me figure out how I'm going to get my first job there. Let me do all the research and prepare, make sure everything is tied together. And that's what people do. And sometimes they never do anything after that. Absolutely. Once you know the first step, my first step was get a visa. That's how you get to the US, right? Applied. I got the visa. Okay. First step checked. Now get a flight. Now find a place where you're going to stay for a meantime. Those are the things that you need to just focus on. What can I do next? You don't need all the steps. You don't need to have all the answers. You don't need to have all your ducks in a row because guess what? Again, plans don't always work out the way you expect them to. You will find yourself in situations that you never imagined that would have happened in the pursuit of your dreams on building your business on creating that next level of your life. You will think you have all your dogs in a row. You will think you have a plan. Do you think I had planned to be in jail? No, but that's what life does. Life happens. So don't sit there and wait to have all the answers. Trust yourself and take the first step. And the second step will show up once you have the first step and the next one. And that's how you keep moving and ultimately get where you want to go. Wow. So yeah, I've, I've heard that, that saying before to just know the next right step, but the way you talk about it is for me, very moving. So I'm really glad you're here because I think <laughs> my audience is going to gain so much value from this interview. I'm over here going, Oh, I'm so glad you're here to teach me everything there is to know about life. Cause wow. But I wanted to touch back on a, a few um, of the topics that you brought up. I, I took notes because there was just so much there. I love the way you say your dreams are calling you or the next level is calling you to do something because that's so much a part of my belief system now is that everyone has a purpose and you have to, you just have to find it because it's what drives you. It's that passion that's in you. Like those, those skills and that passion is in you for a reason, because you're supposed to use it not only for personal fulfillment, but also to make the world a better place. So I can only imagine the amount of people that you've touched with your story. Cause I'm one person here going my whole life has changed. <laughs> like, oh my, gosh. my whole perspective <laughs> on life is different now. Um, but so I can't even imagine like the masses that you probably have, have changed. But even, at least for me, if, even just that one individual that you've changed, you never know how that's going to like ripple out into the universe. <laughs> so yes. it's, it's, it's incredible what people can do with just having, just doing that next right thing. Because you never know how that's going to impact the rest of the world and yourself. Like you said, pl plans change. Had you not come here, imagine like your life would be completely different and everybody who you've touched and who they've touched would be entirely different. Wow. So first, I just wanted to say that because I'm like, oh, I, to I totally agree with you. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing that I wanted to touch on was how you just knew that you wanted more because I know that there is a lot of probably, at least I should say, the people that I've encountered have a misperception of why immigrants come here so most people would think you know oh you know their life was terrible and that's why they came here and you know they're just here to game the system else I don't believe that personally <laughs> and those of you who are there shame on you um, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm gonna start crap we were gonna get mad that's not what I meant this is not where I'm going with this what I'm saying is that you had a really really good life that, and obviously a job you were able to google it's probably what people don't necessarily think of when they think Africa. I'm spitballing, but that's the people that no, I've encountered. I love that you are, you are touching on that. I'm so, I love this so much. Go ahead. When you said that, what I pictured in my mind was Belle from Beauty and the Beast. The very first like big song that she has, she's like running up the hill, kind of like sound of music. And I just know that there's so much more out there and it's not those exact words, but she knows that she like, she wants more than this provincial life is what I think she says. Like she has this life, but she knows in her mind that there's something grander out there. And then of course the whole story carries on. So I kind of want to hear your perspective. I'm sorry. I totally rambled, but yes, I'm yes. I love away. it. So that's a beautiful question. As a matter of fact, that's the, one of the, the, the reason why I'll have uh, my talk show It's going to be on Roku soon. I'm excited about it, but I will be interviewing African women who are in the U S and who are successful in business because of that perspective that it just touched on, you know, not everybody's happy about immigration and I, I get it, you know, so I get it. This is your country. I get it. But at the end of the day, that's why I want, I want people to know more. It's valid. It's okay to ask questions. It's okay to not understand. You don't know what you don't know. That's why I want to bring that conversation to the table. And I'm glad you asked the question. So we, for me personally, I will speak for myself because everybody's stories is different, but 
that you mentioned, for example, that when I say Google for popular, like, oh, in Africa, they have Google. Guess what? In the immigration center, people were asking me sometimes, how did you get here? And I couldn't understand where they were going for uh, with that question. But the equation actually was, we don't know there are aircrafts in Africa. So how do you leave Africa to America? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's how, I mean, I know I'm not saying that, and don't say that in a mean way, but it's just ignorance. If you don't know, that's ignorant, right? So that's how ignorant people are about Africa. They are still have this image and I don't blame them. That's the image the medias have put out there. It's a place where people barely have food and they are sleeping on the street, maybe under trees or something like that. And people have to put money together to save them or a bunch of things. Do people have struggles in Africa? Yes, like everywhere else in the world. And I guarantee you, if they take a camera and they shoot the streets of downtown Los Angeles, and they just take that image and say to the rest of the world, this is what is happening in LA. People sleep under bridges. People don't have anywhere to sleep. Nobody will know Beverly Hills, Hollywood, Manhattan, Beach where I live, all those places exist, right? right. That's the story of Africa. They choose the image that they want the world to see to have a certain perspective about Africa and think that's Africa. They will go in one village somewhere and they just shoot images and they will say, hey, look at these people. They don't even have light. They don't have running water and so forth, so on and so forth. So I, I understand people having that perspective because that's a perspective that will be sold to them for years and years and years. So your question, I love it because it allows me to answer that question and maybe help those people to realize that, hey, if I'm here, probably there are airports there aircraft, cars, <laughs> I guess, to get to the airport, I guess I, did, I took a car or something. So there is some sort of civilization. You are not under bridges and trees and naked and all of that. Because <laughs> if you were naked and I got here naked at the airport, okay, that guy will have been right by saying that I'm a prostitute, but I was dressed. So, <laughs> so we have clothes. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's hilarious. <laughs> but I mean, it's interesting, but it's so important. And even now, Sometimes, you know, I, I read comments on social media. You know, social media is a lovely world, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and people hmm. post things right now about, for example, the vaccine, which is the top hot topic. And I remember when Elon, no, it was uh, Richard Branson sent his uh, space ship, whatever, in the mm -hmm. sky and came back, was celebrating on LinkedIn. People came with pretty mean comments. Why are you doing this, spending all that money instead of sending vaccines to Africa? I was like, we're in 2021. Come on, people. You can't be thinking these things again. But, I mean, I just, I, sometimes I'm like, should I even say something or just ignore because they, they don't, they just assume they know again, which is entitlement. We know better. We are better than you. We need to come save you. And it's time for people to realize that nobody needs to be saved. Not Africans or not any other human beings because everybody has a potential to create the life that they want. I'm right. the perfect example. I come from Africa. And again, as you mentioned, and as I shared at the beginning, over there, I had a life. I was running events. I was hosting TV shows. Oh, yeah, we have TV too. <laughs> we're running <laughs> TV shows. So I had a life. I wasn't sleeping on the street. I'm like, okay, how will I even afford a ticket to come here? And why would they give me a visa to come here if I was like that? But just to say, my wanting more was, you know, I want food on my table, which of course is the reality of many people. I'm not going to lie, even here. So we're not going to make them feel bad about it because it's life. People go through tough time and it's okay, you know, because they can get out of there. There are ways to, you know, change that. So my more was I'm a dreamer and I dream big. I loved the, the media world, I was doing TV shows and, you know, hosting radio shows which I landed by accident, people actually discovered me, but I fell in love with it. And it just happened to match my desire to, to make people happy. I remember as a little girl walking on the street and seeing people and just wondering, is this person happy? And I'll catch myself and say, why do you care? You don't even know this person, you know, right? So I was having that desire, as you say, people have that calling and I didn't know what it meant. I didn't know what to do with it. I was still a little girl. And I grew up, I was a young adult. I remember at the time Rihanna was huge in Cameroon. Each time she will have a hair sign. You know, Rihanna was red hair today, blue hair tomorrow. And each time she will have a new hairstyle, all girls my generation would go get the same hairstyle. 
right? Because, yeah. you know, you have to look like Rihanna, whatever. Okay, yeah, we, we knew Rihanna too. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, and then I'm a big fan of Oprah, who is, right? I'm a big fan of Oprah. And what I was really impressed about, so sometimes I lie on my bed before going to sleep and think about those two women, Rihanna and Oprah. And I will think about them in terms of the influence they have. I will think about Rihanna and how she's influencing girls my age, even myself, because I would, I was doing the haircut too, trust me. So I will think about the influence she has on girls and the way they will go and change their hairstyle just because Rihanna did so. And I'll think about Oprah, same level of or more influence actually. And I'll think about it on my bed and I'll say, people need guidance. People need leaders. That's why they're following. They just follow whatever they do, hairstyle or, oh, Oprah read this book. Everybody wants to read the same book. People are in search of guidance. And my question would be, how can I be influential enough? Because I guess it's influence that allows them to impact people in that way. How can I be influential enough to impact people? But not just for them to change their hairstyle or check out a new restaurant in town, but to create a better life for themselves. Because remember, the little girl in me always want people to be happy, right? And the little voice that we are all familiar with, we show up when we start dreaming of, you know, something that we want, that little voice will come and remind us of all the reasons why it's never going to happen. You know, Rihanna, you don't even sing. And as of Oprah, there's only one Oprah. Even if you can maybe host a TV show, there is no way you're going to be the next Oprah. So forget it, girl. Then how are you going to become that, you know, influencer? <laughs> Tell me all the details. You know, that voice that will always come yeah. and say, forget it. You're just a dreamer. Stop that. You know, better, you know, be real here and try to talk you out of your dream type. Try to talk you out of your, you know, where your soul is calling you to be. And I'll go to sleep on that. Just be like, hey, it is what it is. And then it was so recurrent in me that I knew if I wanted to impact the world. Yes, I was already kind of known in my country. I was on TV, so it's a thing. But I want to impact people around the world. And it's not going to happen here. Barely people even think we have TVs in Africa. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> so I said, okay, what's the best place in the world to do that? America. So let's go. That's where everything is possible. So that's probably the country where my crazy dream has a chance to stand. So maybe you are listening to this and you have a dream that people told you, huh, forget it, you're crazy. Let it. There is a place in your life. It doesn't have to be a different country, but you know there is a step that you can take that will give it a little chance to stand. Maybe it's going to be a new network of friends that will just allow you to dream a little bit bigger and just make you feel like oh that at the end of the day it's not that crazy it's possible it's doable it's available to me so that's what for me america represented that simple small possibility that some way somehow it was going to happen here and that's why i made that crazy move and actually my sister is in canada so she was like no 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 come here instead because safety right, right. at least here i'm going to be here to help you and and another like, mm, no nah. Yeah. No, I don't think it's going to happen in Canada. Love Canada, but no, I'm going to the place where they say, yeah, that's how you guys sold us this country, right? <laughs> Every, anyone can be anything in America. So here we are. So just to go back to the fact that I'm an immigrant, right? It's something that I never considered before coming here. I never thought it's a thing because I, before I came here, first, I didn't think, I didn't see myself as a minority because in my country, Almost everybody is black. Yes, we have white people, but I'm not a minority. But I came here now, all of a sudden, I'm a minority. All of a sudden, it's a thing that I'm black. And to not help my case, I have an accent. So now people know I'm not even from here. And now they are double or triple mad that I'm here. And I have to figure it out. I, st I started working, I uh, guess, where? At LAX, the same airport where I almost got the <laughs> from. Yes, that's how funny my life is. So and actually, I got the job because I was speaking French, basically. And as I was saying, I couldn't even speak English properly, but it was a French airline. So it was a good deal for them to have somebody that can speak French with passengers. So that's what was my first job. And that's where I practiced my English, you know, well enough to be able to have a conversation in English. And in less than a year, I became a manager. That's how bad I was invested in what I was doing. I didn't come here like, oh, well, I'm in America. Everything's going to be easy. No, 
I knew I had to show up for it. Beyond that, when I came, I realized that, oh, wait a minute. Not everybody is even happy to see you. And wait a minute, being black here is a thing. Oh, now you have to prove yourself double, right? Mm -hmm. So I walked like crazy. And in less than a year, I became a manager. And I had a bright future in the company, a really bright future. But yet that voice was still in my heart calling for more. And I knew that more wasn't just a job, nothing wrong with having a job, but I just knew that wasn't why I was here. I didn't come this far for, come, for to come that far. So I said, let's go do that thing that can finally impact people's lives, even if it's just my neighbor, but I'm going to be sharing my story, sharing my message and helping people that my little, the little girl in me want to see happy, create their own happiness. And that's why I decided to go do my coaching business and add speaking to it. Because again, remember, I want to impact people around the world. And I think it's happening because I've been interviewed in podcasts and events in India, London, everywhere around the world. So I think so far, my American dream, I'm not doing too bad on that. So, wow. Yes. Okay. So I have so many notes. <laughs> Before I carry on, I want to touch back on the, because I can hear the trolls already, <laughs> the ignorance comment. And you don't have to justify the word at all for, to me because it is what it is. Like you said, it's the perception of Africa. People can't necessarily understand. And it's not be for lack of knowledge in general. And it's not for lack of intelligence. It's just, we're not told. So there's that, first of all. I just wanted to put that out there so that people aren't like, oh, ah, <laughs> you know. Mm, yes. She said we were ignorant. That's not no, what she meant. No. That's not what she meant at all. <laughs> and so the other thing that I want to touch on is how you were talking about how the people in those countries don't necessarily need saved. And I, I love that because I've actually been working with a one of my clients, my other business is um, Pearls with Purpose, and they offer micro lending and training to women in different countries, uh, Kenya, Africa being one of them, where people who have been rescued from sex trafficking and things like that come to like a co-op area and they're given treatment there. And while they're there, they're able to learn a, a skill. And one of the skills that they can learn is jewelry making through this company. And then the company sells the jewelry here in the US. And it's, it's a great organization. I do work with them. So, you know, disclaimer, but I find it fascinating because I was speaking with her the other day and she and she said basically the same thing. There are organizations here in the U.S., God bless them. They're trying to do the right thing. They want to go there and help because they've been told they need help, but they do it, you know, the American way. Like, let me come here yes. with like all my stuff and I'm going <laughs> to fix it for you instead of like trying to say like, hey, what do you need? How Thank can you. I support you? Thank you. And so, I mean, that's a totally different thing. Exactly. And, and I think, I mean, those organizations, they do it with good intentions. It's just... If you don't mind me uh, yeah, jumping on what uh, we're talking about, uh, people going to Africa to save. The podcast I was interviewing on a few weeks ago, something that I shared with the lady, I said, that's something that happens and have always happened with Africa. Everybody talks about Africa, but Africans are never part of that conversation about Africa, which is interesting. That is interesting. <laughs> it's legit that... If your neighbors see your kids crying and maybe they, they assume those kids are crying because they haven't had food, they will see it, have a meeting in the neighborhood without asking you if your kids are hungry or what is why they've been crying and decide, okay, you know what, let's put money together and go give food to those kids. How would you feel? Insulted. Right. Right. But that's what is happening with Africa has always happened with Africa. Everybody knows better what is good for Africa except Africans, because nobody's ever bothering to even ask them, like, what do you need? That's I appreciate what you say the lady's doing, because it's so important to acknowledge people. And I, I say this, but we do that all the time. We look at people and we assume we know better what is good for them. Right. And it's so disempowering. And no wonder at some point people become disempowered because we treated them as powerless people. They don't know better. We know better what is good for them. As a matter of fact, I was sharing with the lady before, there is a say in my dialect, because you mentioned I speak English, but actually I speak three languages, French, English, and my native dialect. And there is a say there that don't look at where you fell, look at where you stumbled. So today we see the immigration problem. But where did that start? Again, Africans didn't know America or if France or any other country existed until the colonial masters left their countries and they showed up in Africa. And they looked at our way of living, our, my ancestors' way of living, 
they were doing just fine. Farming, having their food, feeding their families, hunting, living their lives in a way that they knew, worshiping the gods they knew. And the colonial masters left their countries when nobody asked them for anything in Africa. They showed up in Africa and they said, your way of living is not good enough. It's not okay for you to not go to school. It's not okay for you to be walking with this kind of you know, outfits. It's not okay for you to worship the gods you are worshiping. You're going to take the Bible and this is the only God you're going to have right now. This is how you're going to have to dress. This is now on you have to go into school. This is who you're not, you need to become. You are not good enough until you look just like us. Yeah. That's what happened with colonization, with slavery. They took even some Africans and brought them here and other countries in Europe. Right. And I think it's so interesting to point out that at least most of the people, I would assume, based on what I know of people today, didn't do any of that with malintentions. Like people who I know who are Christian and they spread that message, do it because they legitimately think that this is the way you save people and the only way to heaven. Like, I love that about them, but I think it's important for them, like everybody to know, like, other religions have their own valid things. It's so yeah. good that you, you're mentioning that because, again, that's what they know. And they right. believe in it. I was a Christian. I was. I grew yeah. up Christian. So I know where they're coming from. And I, right. I know they're coming from the right place. I, I know it. Right. Now, the thing is, the story of Christianism in Africa is not the same everywhere because the Bible was used in Africa to prepare coloni- colonization and slavery. Wow. So it has been weaponized. The first... Yeah people to come to Africa because you can't invade a country that you don't know. Right. So if they wanted to invade, they can't just show up if they don't know the land. What do they do? They send missionaries, quote unquote missionaries with the Bible. Oh, we are coming to spread the word of God. What was their real job? To explore the country and brainwash people before the soldiers will show up by choosing specific verses in the Bible that will say, obey your master, pray for your master. Don't rebel against your master. If rebelling against your master is rebelling against God. So when you brainwash people like that, what what happens? When the master shows up, they are brainwashed to not resist. They are brainwashed to not if if they don't want to go to hell. That's how religion was weaponized in Africa. Before you carry on, I just want to touch on it because, again, I can hear the trolls like going, ah! Okay, this is true of just about any religion. Catholicism with the whole crusade i mean hello um, <laughs> i mean and people point it out of the eastern religions but they never touch on the fact that you know like christians and catholics like killed a ton of people yes <laughs> and but so there are the people who went to those countries with a good heart and of course there's the people who went there like you said because that was a great way to infiltrate before everybody freaks out on the internet those are our ancestors we can't deny the fact that that was true That doesn't mean it has to affect who you are today. And it doesn't mean that by listening to this podcast, you can't change your point of view. There's no, there's nothing wrong with going, oh, I just didn't know. Yeah. Now I know. That's the only reason why I'm sharing this. No pointing figure at anyone, because what's the point of doing that anyways? But if people don't know, they don't know. That's why we are sharing this just for people to be aware. Because again, that's not what is taught in school. It's not in the books and it's not on TV. So it will be best than somebody who has experienced it to share it, right? So that's the only reason why I'm sharing because I know people that don't have access to this information, that's all. Right, and I I think what a lot of people fail to realize is that patriotism isn't holding on to your idea of what you think the U.S. should be (laughs) and like denying everything else. That's not what patriotism is. It's about wanting your country to be the best place possible for everybody, whether you agree with that or not. It's for everybody because the whole world is for everybody. There's no God or whatever higher power you believe in didn't actually draw lines in any of those countries. That was like people who wanted power, wanted land and wanted to own stuff, including other people, which was terrible. So, you know, you can't use religion as a reason why we're better than everybody or the fact that we just simply, like you said, have a different way of life. But at the same time, the people that are here now who hold on to those ideas with such vigor, I think it's fear, one, because they're afraid of what it means to let go of that idea of who, what they think the country is, but also just simply not knowing. 
And so I hope that this podcast will at least maybe one person will be influenced, hopefully more, to know that, hey, first of all, the world is not the way I see it. And there are a lot of things that people can do differently, even if it's just a little bit, and even if it's just in their perception, maybe not writing mean troll comments, (laughs) (laughs) um, that can make a difference. And you don't have to, you know, like, do it the American way, ask a question. I mean, that alone, I think would change the world in a better way. If you see an issue, ask a question before you take action, because you never know how your own perception is changing what the reality actually is. They say perception is reality or reality is perception. It's what you think you see is what you're going to see, even if it's not necessarily what it is. I know Mm -hmm. that was convoluted, but I think that's really important to put out there. It's like, we're not trashing Americans or even the British or any of those countries as they are now. People grow, we evolve and hopefully, you know, we continue to evolve in a positive way. And so just by taking action and learning and listening, you're already evolving and changing the course of time. Because if you think about it, when I was a kid, it was like 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. Like he discovered America and it was like this grand thing. And now you see like he was, did slavery. He did like human trafficking. I mean, I realize that slavery <laughs> is human trafficking, but in different ways. And so, I mean, he was like not a great person by our standards today. I'm sure like by his standards, like he thought he was doing the right thing. Not going to argue that point in any way, shape or form, but we know now differently. And it's the same way with any point of view, in my personal opinion, um, to go to circle back around to other things that you were talking about, because I, I really want to make sure we have time to do it, to do it. I love the way you, you talk about like when you were a little girl, you knew that you wanted to make people happy and how that spark and drive have ch- has changed who you are today because one of my uh, little like quotes is keep the spark because I believe that you know like ember- everybody has a little ember in them that's kind of just burning if you kindle it right and you do it in a way that serves yourself and others like there's so much good that people can do with their lives and last night I was sitting here in fact I went live with you know my own little uh, dear diary moments but I was sitting here going oh my goodness like when I was a little girl I didn't know English. So I was put in front of the TV, like, okay, use the TV to learn because, you know, my, my siblings and my mom were busy and it was a great way to learn English. But a lot of the ideals that I have in my head come from TV shows, which is why I ask you if like, did you watch Beauty and the Beast? I used to watch Who's the Boss because I'm a total nerd. And in the Who's the Boss, the, the lady, Angela, is a ad executive. She runs her own company. She's super like take charge and really smart. I didn't realize that I always wanted to be her. Like I never, I never thought about it. I knew that I love like advertising and coming up with ideas and jingles and things like that. And I knew that I loved the fact that she was like in charge in this thing. I mean, she was who she was and, and nothing stopped her. And then I'm sitting here brainstorming ideas for um, getting media coverage for Pearls with Purpose that I was telling you about. And I was getting on live and then I'm like, oh my God, I'm living my dream. I'm an ad executive, not the way she is yet. And I'm on TV. Like, I mean, not really, not the way I thought about it when I was a kid, but it's like, hello, like those things were there for a reason. And hopefully, I mean, I'd like to think that I'm going to make positive difference and I'm going to keep going until I do. So there's that. But I think it's just, there's some, so much value in realizing that that spark is there. And just listening to it and just knowing the next right step, like you said, and mm-hmm. taking action is all that you have to do. Yes. And, like- and it's really interesting because as a coach, I speak with people that sometimes tell me, I don't know what I want to do with my life. And that's a place where people find themselves when they have lost themselves by trying so hard to fit in all the boxes that society is not only their fault. It's just the way our society is. Everybody expects you to show up a certain way to be accepted. And if you dare to do something different or think differently or make different type of decisions, you will be rejected, judged, shamed, you know, all the things that you can imagine. So it's hard. Not everybody can handle it. And some people just shut down because they are too afraid to remember what they really want. Because I believe we all know, we all are here we all have that little voice within our, our soul, our heart, whatever you want to call it, to tell you, whisper why you are here. Your mm-hmm. soul is always leading you somewhere. But because of that fear, many people shut down. Yeah. So sometimes to help them remember what they really want to do with their lives, why they are here, because you can't 
be on this planet if you don't have any reason to be here. Breathing is not the only reason why you're here. Right. If you are still breathing, there is a reason why. And it's important to remember that reason. It's just even if you feel like, but I don't know, you just forgot. You just, your brain just shut down because the safety mechanism that, that our brain has to keep us safe. If you don't know what to do, guess what? You don't have to do it, right? So it's safe yeah. to be in that space of, I don't know. It's just a way your brain keeps you safe by shutting down and keeping that memory away from the place where, you, okay, now you know what to do, go do it. Why are you not doing it now? You have no excuse. So I asked them this question. When you were a little girl or a little boy, what did you want to be when you grow up? That sometimes helps to yeah. just connect back to that little girl or little boy or little being and ask, remember, when I was growing up, what did I want to be? And it's also interesting when you go to that memory to remember what you wanted to become when you grew up before you were made aware of the fact that the best next thing for you when you grew up is to be a doctor or a lawyer or a pilot. I don't know if it was a thing here, but in Africa, if you want to make it in life, you become a doctor, lawyer, pilot. They have doctors, lawyers, and pilots in Africa? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. I'm just kidding, I'm kidding, so, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, so I know, I know. So yeah, so those are things that we were, and, and it's really something that I know because I grew up thinking I wanted to be a doctor. Mm. And I thought that was my dream for almost my whole entire adult. I mean, I grew up singing like a song. I'm going to be a doctor. I finished high school. I went, I wanted to enter medical school. And I remember when I failed to, to go to medical school, I was depressed for over a week. I couldn't leave my bedroom. I was praying to die. Wow. I just, well, luckily, I just didn't think of killing myself. But when I would wake up, I would be angry that I'm still here. Like, why am I here if I'm not going to be a doctor? My life is useless. I really thought my life was over because I thought that was the only reason why I'm here. And interestingly enough, when I came here and I started working with coaches, doing the personal development work, I realized and I remember that actually it was never my dream. My mom used to tell me all the time that my nanny, yes, I had a nanny, that my nanny was the one usually would take me to the doctor's appointment. And when she would come back with me, she would be so excited. She loved my uh, pediatrics. She would be like, oh my gosh, my baby, she would call me her baby. My baby will be like doctor, whatever her name was. She would be looking cute in her blouse, walking, walking on her heels. She would be singing it like all the time. And I was a baby, right? Mm -hmm. She impressed that information in my subconscious mind. So when I started talking, guess what I was saying? I want to be a doctor. And I thought that was my dream. And it was never, it was her dream for me. Yeah. She wanted her baby to become a doctor, right. just like the woman she admired each time she would take me to the hospital. So, so many people sometimes walk around with a dream that is not even theirs. And it's so important to do that journey of remembering what you really want. Wow, that's, that's super important to me on so many levels because there was such a disconnect between me and the little girl me that I didn't even know, remember that this was something that I wanted until it finally like dawned on me like, oh my gosh. So if you guys really don't know, like seriously, like she said, do the work because it's important just to even to connect to yourself. Like as soon as I figured this out, like I was so happy because <laughs> um, <laughs> at least I like I knew like, hey, this is the path that I'm supposed to be on because hello, like I've been dreaming about it forever. I just didn't know I was. And the other thing that I want to touch on and I just totally lost my train of thought. Um, shoot, <laughs> it was going to be good. <laughs> oh, the, the thing that you said about wanting to be a doctor because of what you had heard growing up. And I'm sure your nanny, obviously she loved you very much, had the best of intentions. And I've caught myself doing this with my own kids. It wasn't until COVID when they were home all the time and I was going crazy that I realized <laughs> that like, hello, I'm putting what I think their life should be on them and then being mad because they can't live up to that. That's not who they are. They're different. And like now I'm trying to embrace like, okay, this is who you are. Let's find a way to do it. And one of the, oh, I know the other thing that I wanted to touch on, on what you said about finding the things that you love, another great way to do that, that I've learned is look at back at all the things that you've ever done in your life, whether it be school, you know, that one science project that you really liked, maybe you had a job, my, my friend, Jeff, who's one of the hosts of the last life ever podcast, he had a job at 7-Eleven that he loved when he was growing up. And it was because he would get to talk to people. He would sit in the parking lot. He would, he says this all the time, you know, sitting in the parking lot on his break, smoking cigarettes, talking to people. Now he's a host of a podcast. So look back at the things that you liked in those jobs. Even if you hated the job in general, 
if there's just even one thing and look for the commonality among those things and then go from there. Sometimes you have to create it, what it is that you want to be because there's only one you, whoever you are, and you're here for a reason. I really wanted to touch on all of those things that I think are really, really important. Everybody has a dream, is I guess is what I'm saying. And mm -hmm. even, even people who think that they are successful, because I've met a lot of them either doing this podcast or even just doing research and talking to people. There are people who have great success in wealth in both socially, emotionally, and just possessions that are still very, very unhappy because they're not following their passions. That's not what their soul is craving. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's really important to put that out to people. Like if you're not happy, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. And, and that's why, you know, I love to talk about courage because that's where courage comes in. It's yeah. scary. It's scary to do that work, to go within. Because yeah. the, the information that you, you will discover are not the ones you expect. And right. once you have them, now you are called to do something about it. That's right. And that's scary. You know, right. the biggest fears of people, I think, is really not always what people think. Oh, well, if I go do it, maybe I'm going to fail. I'm going to make a mistake. Yes. But I think the biggest fear is the fear that all human beings have is, am I good enough? Right. So when you discover, as uh, you know, Veronica or myself shared the little tricks, of course, there are many more. Sometimes you take, you know, a little so extra support. But if you even do those two things that we shared here and you discover what your real passion is, what your real calling on this planet is, and you find yourself being afraid of going to do it, and you ask conversation starts of what if I quit? What are people going to say? What if I fail? What if it's a big mistake? When you find yourself in that conversation, remember that really the backstory is you're wondering if you are good enough, good enough to have what you really want. And that's really sad. And you know why we have that all of us? Because growing up, we have been told so many times that what we want is not good enough as kids. Not that the, our parents didn't put it like that, but that's how our subconscious mind took and recorded the information. You want something and it's like, nope, why don't even think about it? What are you even thinking? No, of course, no, that's not a good idea. Why? You're a little kid. And of course, your parents are trying to protect you, trying to keep you safe. But what is your little brain hearing? Oh, what I want is not good enough. It's causing trouble. It's making mom or dad unhappy. So what I want is the problem here. So now you grow up feeling guilty to want the things that you want, feeling bad about wanting the life that you want, thinking. It's not okay for you to have it. Why? Because mom or dad, or now maybe my neighbor, now maybe my partner, now maybe my friends, now maybe whoever, it's not going to be happy. And I'm not supposed to make them, it's going to be my fault because of me going after what I want. So I shouldn't go after what I want just for everyone else to be happy. Meaning what I want is not good enough. And I am not good enough if I even want it. And is it even okay for me to want something? without knowing for sure everyone else is okay with it. And the, the truth is nobody have something that everybody will say, yeah, it's go for it. But we want that approval. We want that acknowledgement from the people we love, which is human. We, we all want that. But until we have the courage to pass and say, hey, I'll do it regardless. My intention here is not to hurt anyone. My intention here is not to upset anyone. My intention here is not to make anyone sad or disappoint anyone. My intention here is simply to be happy and have the courage to go after that. That's scary. And I get it. It's not always easy, but the courage to do it is what will ultimately create the happy life you are going after. One nurse in Australia ran a survey a few years ago. I read the article. I forgot her name. She was taking care of terminally ill patients in a hospital. They were elderly people, you know, sick of cancer or really other diseases. And they knew they had like a few weeks to still be alive and to keep them entertained during their last days on this planet. She started asking them questions and she did that for like two or three, four years, asking all of them the same question. What is your biggest regret as you are about to leave this planet? And she recorded their answers over the years. Wow. She came out with a short list of 10 main answers that were coming back over and over from each one of the people she has spoken with before they left this planet. 
And the number one on that list was not, my biggest regret is not I didn't say I love you enough to the people that I love. That wasn't the number one. The number one on that list was my biggest regret is that I never had the courage to pursue my dreams. Wow. And we don't want that to happen. We don't want to. And I, as I'm sharing this, I want you to think about if you are lying in that bed and you know you have a few days to live, will you be really happy that you have given it a shot? Doesn't mean you are going to hit all the marks, but at least you went after it. At least you had the courage to pursue it. Or you are going to be one of those patients and say, my biggest regret is that I didn't have the courage to pursue my dreams. I don't want to be that patient. So that's why I'm giving it a shot. Even when it's scary, even when it sounds crazy, I don't want to be that patient. I hope you, you don't want to be that patient either. Yeah. Wow. I, I completely agree with you. I think there's so many things in the, in the human brain and just the way we're, we evolved as humans that the fear of the unknown to me is what often keeps people from pursuing anything different because they literally don't know. And that was, that goes back to the, like, Hey, should I go in that dark forest? Probably not. Cause I don't know what's there and it's going to kill me. <laughs> like, so it's, I mean, it's like an evolutionary thing. It's, it's a good thing to have fear, but you need to know when you need to be courageous because some things are more important than the fear of what you think might not happen or, or might happen. The other thing is you have to be able to let go of the idea that you have of how that dream is going to look. Cause I think that's a huge thing. People have like these big lofty dreams and they don't see the opportunities that are around them that are fulfilled, that could fulfill those dreams for them because they think they know what it's supposed to look like. And that might not be right. Like you, your soul is speaking to you, but your brain has a way of interpreting it. And so if it might interpret it wrong, in my opinion, I I've had that experience in my own life where I'm like, I thought I was going to do this. And then all of a sudden, Oh, wait, this other thing popped up and now, whoa, this is way better than what I could even have dreamt of. And so I think that is a super important thing for people to, to know. And, and it ties back into all the, the whole conversation that we've had, in my opinion, because it's the ability to think flexibly. So know what you know, but be open to the possibility that what you know isn't correct or can be different and possibly better. You never, you don't know until you've explored it. So whether it be an idea of what our history is like, <laughs> what other countries are like now, or just simply in the, how you're going to pursue your dreams. Like I said, when I was a kid, now looking back, literally just came to me. I wanted to be on TV. Am I on TV? No, I'm not on Saved by the Bell. Like I was, like I thought I would be, you know, <laughs> or at least I hope I would be, you know, with Zach Morris and everybody who I had a huge <laughs> crush on back in the day. Um, but like I get to talk to really cool people like you and learn new things and this will be broadcast. Somebody out there will watch it and hopefully learn something cool. So I am pursuing my dream in a way that I never would have thought possible because podcasts didn't even exist <laughs> when I was a little kid. There's nothing that could have prepared me for this. So that's my parting tidbit on the exceptional amount of knowledge that you just put out there. And I really hope that people take it to heart with an open mind. They can, at first the podcast will come out without the visuals, so they won't be able to see, you know, your smiling face. And the <laughs> fact that at least from what I know of you and how like your energy is, mm. I know that you're not saying it in a way that is meant to insult anybody. People have a way of hearing it that way. So I hope that doesn't happen. But I think if people are just open to the idea of anything, there's so much that can be gained and learned just by listening. So that's my little parting thought. <laughs> um, I, before we wrap this up, because I could talk to you forever. Um, <laughs> I really could. This is a great conversation. Um, I want to touch back on, before I came on with you, I saw that you are, you are actually a coach, right? You're a speaker and a coach as well. So you help people find this passion within them. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your coaching program? So those of the, who, who are moved by you can, can reach out to you. Yeah. So I'm a personal empowerment coach and I work with uh, entrepreneurs especially women I love my women nothing against anyone else it's just that I believe women have been conditioned and are still conditioned to not show up to play safe so for them to reach the level of success that they sometimes secretly dream of it takes courage to break free from all those conditionings and all those expectations that society has on women especially, right? So that's why 
I help them to find that courage, to make those scary decisions that ultimately will lead them to the success that they want, right? And it comes down to what you were talking about. Sometimes changing path, pivoting, and it's okay. Sometimes it's scary for people to do something different. I get it. That's why I want to be there because guess what? The journey of becoming a successful entrepreneur or successful, successful person in life is full of surprise. It's full of unexpected. So when they think they need to have all the answers, I'm there to boost their courage to take the first next aligned action that is calling them without waiting to have all their dogs in a row. And again, that's just a space of, we want to be safe. So that's why we want to know all the answers before. So we want them to live from safety and make those bold moves because that's where you get where you want to go. You know, you don't become wildly successful by being fear fearful, you become bold. And there's no such thing as not being afraid. So it's okay to be afraid. We all are. If somebody tells you I'm a fearless human being, that's not a human being. They need to identify, they better identify themselves. They are no humans. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay to be afraid. Courage is not the absence of fear. It's you acknowledging the fear and having the courage, which I'd love to explain by saying it's just a decision you make when you are in that space of fear. The decision you make to show up is courage. You decide right now and right here and there that I'm going to do it regardless. It's going to happen. I'm going to show up for it and I'm not going to quit. I'm going to go to the finish line, whatever the finish line looks like. So what I really help them to do is first get clear on what they want, make sure that is really what they want. And after that, what are the aligned actions? and what, they are emo what emotions are showing up when they know what to do, and now they are not doing it. What is really happening? What is the backstory? What is the deeper fear there? And we move through that, and they have the courage to go show up and go do it. And I also let them re release the expectation, what you described earlier by a certain vision of what the dream should look like. Let, help them let go of the expectation to be able to enjoy the process because the growth happens not at the destination. Growth happened or happens during the process of achieving that goal, achieving that dream. So that's the process I help them also enjoy because entrepreneurship journey can be tough. You know that. Yes. So we want to be doing something that is enjoyable enough for us to be able to keep going. Can we cry? Of course, we should be crying <laughs> here and there. If we feel like it, it's good for us to be okay, to feel our emotions, which again has been taught to be bad. They mm -hmm. call us names when we are emotional. They call us weak. They call, and that's why so many women try to shut down who they are, to try to fit in a certain model and show up a certain way. That is not who they are. And it takes courage to be like, hey, this is me. Sometimes I cry. Sometimes, you know, I'm doing a Facebook live, my baby shows up and I'm okay with it. I'm not ashamed. I don't feel guilty. I don't have to apologize for it because this is me. I love you, but I'm not going to change to make you happy. So that takes courage. And that's the journey I really support my clients with. Wow. <laughs> and I just, I'm mesmerized. Like I said, I could talk to you all day long. I think this is fabulous. You have so much value to put out there into the world. So I'm glad you are doing what it is that you do. Cause I think that a lot of people can benefit from it both as a client and just even just hearing you speak. And by the way, I love your accent. Thank you. <laughs> um, I wanted to touch on a couple of things that I think, like I said, I relate everything to TV. There's, have you ever watched seen the movie or show veggie tales? Yes. Okay. Have you seen the one where the little boy has the backpack? No. So I, I forget the name of the episode and pe if people who are out there listening, forgive me if I don't get all the details right, but the whole premise of the show is this little boy has a backpack and he's an artist. He wants to draw and he's showing people throughout the town, like, this is what I made. And people were like, oh, you know, the sun's not the right color or this isn't right. And so, you know, he would like discard his art and every time they would take his art and put it in his backpack and it was weighing him down the whole show, you know, it's getting heavier and heavier because people are putting more and more things on his backpack. I'm going to tear up just talking about this <laughs> cartoon, <laughs> but he gets to the end and he's basically, he climbs up this mountain and you get the idea that he's talking to God, but they don't really say it's just like this wise person at the top of the mountain. And it's basically, um, he says, 
you all of these expectations of this not being good enough were put in here for you. That wasn't you. I need you to do these beautiful things. This is you. Don't forget it. This is your strength and your power and your passion, not the things that are holding you back. The idea of those things is what's holding you back. And there's a big difference. And so I thought that that tied yes. in perfectly to what you said. And it's like, yes. like I said, it's a cartoon that I saw forever ago. And it literally has had that much of an impact that I'm like, oh my God, that's not, just like the veggie tales. <laughs> <laughs> so before we wrap up again, where can people find you? What social media or website or what would you like to put out there for people to, to reach out? Yes, yeah, so the easiest way to probably reach out is to DM me on Facebook. My name over there is Crystal Biga, and it's the same name on all social media. My website also is crystalbiga.com. That's C H R I S T E L L E B I I G A.com. You can go there, and actually, you can also take advantage of a complimentary session that I have there that I call Courage Boost Session. It's a 30 minute complimentary call that you can go on my website and you know sign up for. That way we can see what is holding you back right now and boost your courage so you can go do it. So, yeah. I should totally do that. <laughs> I feel like I've already gotten a free session. I'm like, <laughs> I've learned so much. Um, no, And for everybody who's listening, I'll put all of that in the show notes as well. So feel free to, like, if you're driving while you're listening to this, you don't have to like, oh my God, I have to write this down. Um, because it'll be in the show notes. And I know that feeling because I have come home from long drives with like notes scribbled on my thigh because I'm writing as I'm driving. Like, I can't forget this. This is so important. <laughs> but I want to thank you so, so much for taking the time out of your day to come on here and talk to me. I really did learn a lot. I'm not just speaking in hyperbole. Like it was mind blowing to me. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. And thank you for the amazing question that you asked because you allowed me to talk about things that are close to my heart. So thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. That, that is my goal is like, like I was telling you before is that everybody has that unique perspective that nobody else has. It's just about finding it and holding space for it. So I'm glad that I, I'm glad that I was able to touch on a thing that I didn't even know was so important to you, <laughs> but obviously it was here and here. So I got there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, thank you everybody for listening and I'll be right back right after this. That interview took a lot of unexpected twists and turns, but I really enjoyed the conversation and I hope you enjoyed it as well. Let me know what you think, but please be kind to each other in the comments. I would truly appreciate it. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you next time on The Biz Essentials. You've been listening to The Biz Essentials. Thanks for listening to the show. We hope you've gotten some useful and practical information, learning how to be productive, be successful, be joyful, and more importantly, be yourself and turning your dreams into successful passion projects. By listening to this show, you've already set into motion the most important part, starting. So it's important to catch the next episode. Make sure to like, rate, and review the show. In the meantime, hook up with us on social media at Veronica Ventures and at The Biz Essentials. Till next time, this is The Biz Essentials. Today's quote of the day is by Sir Winston Churchill. He once said, fear is a reaction. Courage is a decision. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining me today, and I'll catch you next time on The Biz Essentials. Bye.